Now, of course, the idea is, why does this formula work? So the idea behind this is that the full proof for this shoelace theorem here is beyond what we have, beyond the scope of what we have in this course, unfortunately. That would require knowledge of things known as matrices and determinants, and presumably that's where the formula first sort of came out, came as a result of, uh, by looking at specific matrices. Um, but what we're going to do here is we're going to start with the simplest case. We're going to prove that it works with triangles, and then we're going to see where this goes from here. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch a triangle on this here. Now, note that a triangle in the corner plane in general is just going to be six vertices here. Now, um, just like before, just like the previous lesson we talked about, just like two, the lesson two days uh, previously on Monday, uh, we talked about how in this situation we can try to set it up so that we can make as many things zero as possible here. So I'm going to set it up so that my triangle here has one vertex at the origin. So I'm going to call this point zero, zero, and I'm going to create my triangle like this. Now note that dragging a triangle, sliding it into a new position, uh, doesn't affect the triangle's area here. I think you can see that by, trend, by moving the triangle, translating it, nothing really happens in the area here. Now some of you may want to know, wait a minute, can't we just rotate it so that one side is on the axis? Yes, you're right, you can do that here, and that actually makes things a lot easier. You can try this out on your own. But I'm going to do it like this here. I'm going to call this vertex AB, I'm going to call this vertex CD here. So now we have four vertices. So remembering what we did previously here, what we can do is, we, again, we can go ahead and encase this in a box, a uh, rectangle here. And by encasing this into a rectangle, the nice part about this is that the rectangle has very nice uh, dimensions here. So in this situation, we can see what's going on in this situation. With this rectangle here, right, I think we can see that in this case, it's going to be A comma zero here, right, because we're A units over on this way. This point is going to be A comma D, right? It's going to inherit the Y corner here because we're that far up. And there's going to be 0 comma D. So we're going to find the area of the triangle here, right? So we're going to find the area of this triangle here. And I'll call the area here K to use a different variable. That is going to be the area of the rectangle, right? Minus these three areas here, 1, 2, and 3. So it's going to be minus uh, 1, 2, plus 2, plus 3. Okay? So now we can go ahead and write this out here. Let's see. The area of the, let's see, the area of the blue rectangle. The area of the blue rectangle is not hard because, as you can see, the hor it's uh, horizontally A. So this is A here, and then it's vertically D. So this is going to be AD. Minus, now we're going to look at the parentheses here. What's in the parentheses? So the area of this triangle, this triangle is pretty straightforward here. It looks like it's got a height of D here and a length of C. So it's going to be 1 half CD here. Okay. Plus, let's see, uh, triangle 3 is probably the easiest one here. Uh, again, it's got a length of A and a height of B. So that means that's going to be 1 half AB. Now, the tough part is uh, triangle 2. In this situation here, we can see that this case is going to be D minus B here, right? Because you start, it starts off at B units up, and it goes up to D units up, so it's going to be D minus B here. And again, we have this situation here. We can see that it starts off at C, and then it moves over to A, so this is going to be A minus C here. So in this situation, this is going to be one half of uh, D minus B times A minus C. Now, note I actually set this up here so that all the things are po all these uh, pro um, these things are going to be positive here. Um, if it's just based on the way it's set up here, because I have some things further to the right of others. Okay, now it's just algebra here. So let's go ahead and write this one out. Let's see, A D minus. Oh boy, so that's one half C D plus. So now we're going to write all this out algebraically. This is going to be one half. Let's see, the first term is A D. Then we have uh, what appears to be, so notice that everything here is going to be 1 half. So it's going to be 1 half AD minus 1 half CD here, minus 1 half AB, and then a plus 1 half BC here. That's going to be useful. And then we have a plus 1 half AB. Yikes, this looks awful. But we can see here there are a couple things that happen, which is very nice here. We see a 1 half CD here and a minus 1 half CD. These cancel out. They go away very nicely here. Furthermore, I think you can also see that I think there's a minus 1 half, yeah, there's a minus 1 half AB here and a positive 1 half AB. Those cancel out as well. So what we have here is therefore in this situation AD minus, let's see what survived. We have a 1 half AD and a positive 1 half BC here. Remember, since we're subtracting everything here, so it's going to be AD, we're going to flip all the signs, it's AD minus 1 half AD minus 1 half BC. <clears throat> now you have AD minus 1 half AD, that's just 1 half AD here. 
minus one half BC. So it's going to be one half of parentheses AD minus BC here. So we see that in this situation, this is our setup. Now, let's verify this using the uh, let's verify this using the shoelace formula. So we're going to start again at zero zero here, and then we're just going to go around the figure here. So zero zero, A B, C D, and then back to zero zero here. So we hope that this whatever our, our our procedure does yields us this here. Let's see, zero times B is zero. A times D is A D. C times zero is zero. Other way, we have a times 0 is 0, uh, b times c is bc here, and d times 0 is 0. Sorry, I forgot the 0 here. And then we can see, put this together, there's ad, there's bc here, and we note that in this situation here, it's going to be 1 half the, the difference between the two things, ad minus bc. So this does indeed match what we have here. So we can see that for the general triangle, this actually does work. Now, how did I know that AD was bigger than BD, BC? I didn't. The thing is here, even if we switch the order made one half of BC minus AD here, this is still this is going to be a negative quantity here, but it's going to be the negative of this particular quantity. So that means, remember that since the uh, we want the area to be positive, we're going to basically just take whichever one is positive here, whether it's AD minus BC or BC minus AD, and this matches up here. So you can see that for the general triangle, this does work. Now, of course, this works with triangles. Now we have to show that it works everything. So one sort of outline of a proof that you can do here is what is you're going to use something uh, a technique known as mathematical induction, where we're going to show that this works for our base case. We want ourselves a simple case to begin with, in this case a triangle, and then we're going to try to show that every case we can build every case from the case that came before it here. So the idea behind this is that suppose we have suppose from we want to move up to quadrilaterals here. So with quadrilaterals, one thing we can do is we can divide the quadrilateral into two triangles, and since this particular triangle work, formula works, I can now build a quadrilateral formula. Okay. Now with uh, quadrilaterals here, now if we want to move up to a pentagon here, we can create a pentagon, slice off a triangle, and then use the formula for quadrilaterals and uh, pentagon and uh, tr triangles here, and we can keep going like that. So again, I'm going to spare you the details about this here, but you can see that this works for the general triangle here.